Thanks for taking an interest in amphibians and reptiles of Oregon. You might be curious as to what types of critters you may see during the duration of the course. Let's start by going over what we will see on the first of many exciting field trips you will take. The first field trip is to Hidden Lake, located in scenic Oregon. After arriving at our location, students will be given instruction in proper field journal techniques and tips on how to catch amphibians and reptiles. When you are out there, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. This isn't bird watching. Let's now take a look at some of the amphibians and reptiles you may encounter. Giant Salamander, Dicamptodon tenebrosus. The giant salamander becomes sexually mature even though it retains its larval morphology. It is also the largest terrestrial salamander. The presence and distribution of amphibians and reptiles is regulated by snowpack and low temperatures at higher elevation. A lack of moisture on the eastern side of the Cascades also results in a shorter active season. Clouded Salamander, Aeneides ferius. Another lungless salamander, the clouded salamander can be identified by closely looking at its toes, which are squared off. This salamander is also a direct developer. The Cascades Physiographic Province is comprised of higher elevation mountains that form the eastern border of the Willamette Valley. The high elevation of this province results in colder temperatures seasonally as well as daily. Dun Salamander, Plethodon Dunai. The Dun Salamander is highly sensitive to desiccation. It will be usually found in seeps and springs. It also is a lungless salamander, which means that gas exchange occurs in the mouth and skin as opposed to the lungs. Encetina, Encetina Escholzi. A key feature of the Encetina are its so-called golden armpits, which are a yellow coloration where the limbs join the body. Another feature to observe is a constriction point at the base of the tail. Coastal tail frog, Ascaphus trui. This amphibian's larva can be found in fast-moving water with rocky bottoms. A defining characteristic of the larva is a prominent sucker mouth which it uses for feeding and substrate attachment. Pacific tree frog, Sudacris regilla. Pacific tree frogs exhibit a wide variety of color polymorphism, and it is easy to distinguish males from females. Males possess a black throat or vocal sac, which becomes distended while coursing. This egg mask is the product of one female. Was it laid by some kind of 10-pound giant salamander? No. The egg mass swells when it is immersed in water. There is an algae in the egg capsule, which is a symbiont with the embryo. The algae takes in ammonia and gives the salamander oxygen. Oregon Spotted Frog, Rana pretiosa. The spotted frog's skin tends to have a warty appearance. The eyes are also set toward the top of the head and gives the sense that they are watching you. While many spotted frogs contain a red pigmentation, the spotted frogs of Oregon usually lack this pigmentation. Oregon Slender Salamander, Batrachoseps right eye. White spots on this salamander's side are a dead giveaway. These salamanders also have a skinny body type. The slender salamander is a lungless salamander that is an example of a direct developer. It is also Oregon's only endemic salamander. Northwestern garter snake, Thamnophis oronoides. The Northwestern Garter Snake is considered to have the most variable color polymorphism in Oregon.
this snake can be identified by its seven upper labial scales. Environmental factors that reptiles and amphibians must overcome in the Cascades physiographic province is the limited active season for amphibians and fewer high temperature days that are suitable for the thermoregulatory needs of reptiles. The next field trip is to the Great Basin, which is a large area in central and eastern Oregon. This area consists of desert as well as rocky outcrops. It is a great place for finding reptiles. The rain shadow effect caused by the Cascades greatly reduces the amount of rainfall in the Great Basin. Another hurdle that animals living in the Great Basin must overcome is a greater fluctuation in temperature. Low elevation areas such as the Alvord Desert are also much warmer than higher elevation provinces. A problem facing reptiles in the Great Basin is crested wheatgrass. This grass was introduced as a food source for grazing cattle. Unfortunately, the grass grows in clumps and fills the sandy habitat, which in turn decimates the lizard population. Desert Horned Lizard, Phrynosoma platyrhinos. This lizard is characterized by a flattened body and horns at the back of its head. A defense mechanism for this lizard is to jerk its head back and stab with its horns any would-be predators. When threatened, the Desert Horned Lizard also flattens out its body and exposes its lateral spines. A possible reason for this may be to make it hard to swallow for a hungry predator. This behavior has little effect, however, on curious Homo sapiens. Western Fence Lizard, Scoloporus occidentalis. This lizard can usually be found out in the open while sunning itself on rocks. An identifying characteristic are large blue patches on each side of the abdomen, as well as the throat. Collared Lizard, Crotophytus bisinctorius. The collared lizard can be found in true desert areas which are characterized by open sand, rocks, and sagebrush. When running at top speed, the collared lizard runs in a bipedal fashion. A good place to find these reptiles are at the base of the beautiful Steens Mountains. And after a long day of lizard hunting, don't forget to treat yourself to one of Field Station's world famous milkshakes. Leopard Lizard, Gambilia wislazini. This lizard is a close relative of the collared lizard. Breeding females can be identified by orange coloration at the base of the tail, while males have classic leopard spots. Gopher Snake, Petuifus catinifer. The gopher snake is similar in appearance and shares the same range as the western rattlesnake. If threatened, it will mimic the rattlesnake by hissing and taking a rattlesnake strike posture. This is both good and bad for the gopher snake because while it may succeed in warding off a threat, this behavior also makes the gopher snake a target for humans intent on killing rattlesnakes. Sagebrush Lizard, Scoloporus graciosus. The sagebrush lizard is very similar to the western fence lizard in respect to its body style and blue abdomen coloration. A key difference, however, is that sagebrush lizards lack the blue neck coloration and their scales are not keeled. Western Rattlesnake, Crotalus viridis. This snake has retractable fangs, which are similar in action to hypodermic needles. Another button is added to the rattle each time the snake sheds. The western rattlesnake possesses keeled scales and, like all pit vipers, has heat-sensitive pits which aid in hunting.
The final field trip is to Wildcat Creek, which is in the Coast Range, Physiographic Province. The Coast Range sees a large amount of rainfall in late fall through spring due to storms from the Pacific. The temperature in the Coast Range does not fluctuate much due to the stabilizing influence of the Pacific Ocean. Common garter snake, Thamnophis sirtalis. This snake can be identified by seven upper labial scales and ten lower labial scales. This specimen had eight upper labial scales. Individuals possessing more than seven upper labial scales are known as cheaters. A distinctive red and black checkerboard pattern on the body is also a good identifying characteristic for garter snakes found at Wildcat Creek. Northern Alligator Lizard, Algeria Carulia. The Northern Alligator Lizard has a reputation for not being as friendly as the other lizards you may encounter. It has a wide range in the Pacific Northwest. 17% of reptiles in the Pacific Northwest can be found in the Coast Range. Ringneck Snake, Diadophus punctatus. The ringneck snake exhibits an interesting predator defense mechanism when threatened. The ringneck snake will tuck its head under its body and coil its tail into a corkscrew. This corkscrew tail is used as a false head to draw attention away from its real head. The ringneck snake has a very shiny appearance with a bright orange ventral side. It also has an orange ring around its neck. Bullfrog, Rana catespiana. The bullfrog is the largest North American frog. This specimen is a metamorphosing juvenile. This means that in this intermediate stage of its life, it has both larval and adult characteristics. Rough-skinned newt, Tericha granulosa. The rough-skinned newt can be identified by its yellow-orange underbelly, as well as its rough skin, from which it gets its common name. The rough-skinned newt exudes poison from glands in its skin called granulate glands. Thanks for coming with us on our exploration of amphibians and reptiles of Oregon. We hope this video has been informative and helpful to you in your study of these amazing creatures. 